Chris Callow here, technical agronomist for DeKalb Basgro in West Central Illinois. Coming to you again with another edition of a performance update. This time we're going to talk about Asgrow Extend Flex varieties from a 2.6 to 3.3 relative maturity. Just a few things I'd like to point out first. First of all, Asgrow soybeans are proven exclusive genetics. So when I say exclusive, that means what you get in an Asgrow bag, you cannot get in any other bag in the entire industry. And when I say proven, I mean that based off the fact that what is in an Extend Flex bag is built off what was in a Renaperty to Extend bag, and the Extends were built off of Renaperty to Yield. So if you think back to a couple years ago when we converted Renaperty 1s to Renaperty 2s, we put that trait in, the, in a different spot in the genome that triggered a higher yield response. And I think most people would agree they saw higher yielding beans out of the Renaperty 2s over the Renaperty 1s. So when I say proven genetics, that's what I talk about is that they are built off Renaperty to yield technology. And we've continued to use that as the base, as like I said, as we went into extend and now into extend flex, and we will use that as a base as we go forward. Another thing I'd like to point out is the flexible and efficacious uh, weed control system that is with extend flex. Now with the ability to use glufosinate, glyphosate, and dicamba, all in-crop post-immersion on the same soybean. And another thing I'd like to call out is what I refer to as the first mover advantage that you will get with using Asgrow Extend Flex varieties. Three things to call your attention to there. One, we have the most varieties to offer of any company in the industry, meaning we have more products at more maturities, so the sheer number of products to choose from is high. Secondly, we have large volumes of each of those products to pick from as well. And last but not least, and yes, I am a little bit biased, but I believe we have the best products in the Asgro bag of any of the Extend Flex varieties that are in the industry. Eight different products here in this maturity zone that we will talk about today. Everything from a 26 XF1 through a 33 XF1. So here I'm showing the yield advantage of each individual product compared to competitive products in the industry. This would be plus or minus 0.3 relative maturity in the state of Illinois from 2020. The number of comparisons is down there at the bottom in the uh, boxes uh, below the graphs. So as you look at those blue bars, you might begin to scratch your head a little bit and say, well, I wonder how that compares versus what we had been selling. So in this graph, what I've done is I've brought in several key Asgro Extend varieties, and those are all depicted in the yellow bars. And then the Extend Flex are in the blue bars. So again, this is comparisons against competitive products in the state of Illinois. The Extend would be multi-year data, and the Extend Flex would be 2020 data only. So as you look at this, you can see that some obviously perform better than others, but at the end of the day, the point that I want to drive home is, is that if you look at those blue bars, in relative comparison to the yellow bars, we are in just as good of a spot with the Asgore Extend Flex varieties as we were a year ago or two years ago selling Extend varieties of this same maturity zone. So for each individual product, we're gonna look at what is referred to as a yield stability graph. And what we wanna pay attention to is the slope of the blue line that's on that graph. And what that indicates is, is that how it's gonna perform across a range of yield environments. Taking a look here at 26 XF1 and what this graph would suggest is, is that it is very broadly adapted and stable across yield environments. Doesn't get any better or worse at any one particular yield level. This does align exactly with what we saw out of it pre-commercially and what the multi-year data would suggest on this variety. Very good immersion sustainability with 26 XF1s and performance that mirrors that of 26 X8, was an ex which was an excellent product that we sold considerable amounts of in the Asgrow bag. 27 XFO is an excellent choice for average to higher yielding acres. This aligns perfectly with what we saw out of it in our pre-commercial data, that it performs exceptionally well in those higher yielding environments. It does have good emergence but only average standability, so maybe back off the population a little bit to help manage that standability. It does have performance much like that of 27XO and 26X8 as well in all of our testing. 27XF1 has a good agronomic package as well as good standability. It is broadly adapted with a slight bias to get better as the yield environments climb. We've seen that in pre-commercial data as well. Similar performance to key products like 26X8 and 27XO in the Asgrow lineup. 
We are a little bit supply limited on this product, so take what supply you can get and use it wisely. 28XF1 demonstrated pretty good performance in some of those tougher yielding environments here in 2020, and that pretty well aligns with what we saw out of it as a pre-commercial product. This variety offers very good emergence and some of the better SDS protection of any beans in our lineup in this relative maturity. I would encourage you to place this product on some of the average to tougher acres and take advantage of other products that offer higher yield potential on some of the better acres. 29XF1 demonstrated in 2020 that it excelled in higher yielding environments, and this mirrors with what we saw out of it as a pre-commercial product as well. A very well-rounded agronomic product with overall pretty good ratings, with the exception of a slightly below average SDS rating, so consider a seed treatment there to add extra protection. Place this on the, your average to better soils and take advantage of that high yield potential. A little bit of a wonky graph here on 30 XFOs, but what I take from this graph and what we've seen out of it in pre-commercial data in previous years is good broad acre adaptability and stability across the all yield levels. Good emergence and standability on this product with average ratings on the rest of the agronomic package after that. Data would suggest very similar performance to that of 30X9s that we sold a considerable amount of as an Asgur Extend variety. So I encourage you to use this on about any and all acre in central Illinois. 31XF1 has a little bit of an interesting story behind it. This graph suggests that it definitely gets better as the yield environment climbs, and that's exactly what we saw out of it out of pre-commercial data as well. The troubling part with this variety is that the seed came back from winter exceptionally late. I want to say it was close to May 25th or so before this seed actually got in our hands here in the U.S. So planting this variety in the 1st of June in a lot of trials put it behind the 8-ball before it ever got out of the ground. And with the vast majority of those plots yielding in the mid-60s or lower, this product didn't perform very well because that's not where it's at home. This product performs better in higher yielding environments. 33XF1 has another little bit of a wonky graph to it, but if I flatten that out, basically that's exactly what we've seen out of this variety in pre-commercial data in previous years. It does have broad acre adaptability and good stability across all yield levels. This product can be just a little bit slower than the others as far as emergence, so make note of that. I would encourage you to place this on more of the average soils to take advantage of a higher yield potential that maybe some of the fuller season beans might offer. Not that 33XF1 can't perform at some of those higher yielding environments because as you see here, there's several dots north of 80 where this variety was better than average. I just think 35XF1 and others have a little bit more top end to offer. So let's put those on the better dirt and save 33XF1s for other acres. So to wrap this up, there are a lot of choices here in this relative maturity. There's eight products there to pick from between a 2.8 and a 3.3 that can fit about any and all acres that we would encounter. The performance of these Extend Flex products is similar to or better than the performance that we were used to with Extend products in this same maturity. We are a little bit supply limited on the 27XF1 and 29XF1s. So I encourage you to get what supply you can and utilize it wisely. 26XF1, 30XFO, and 33XF1 have demonstrated their ability to be very stable across different yield environments. So I think we could use them on a wide range of soils. 27XFO, 27XF1, 29XF1, and 31XF1 have demonstrated that they get better as the yield environment climbs. So we wanna keep those products for more of the average to the better acre. And lastly, those 28XF1s, let's save those for maybe some of the tougher acres if they've demonstrated some pretty good stress tolerance in those lower yielding environments. As usual, I thank you for your time and your attention. And if you happen to have any further questions or would like further information, don't hesitate to reach out to your FSR or your technical agronomist. Thank you and have a great day.